Good day, everyone. Our concentration will be on the proof of the outside angle theorem involving two secants or two tangents and angles of a circle. The theorem states that the measure of an angle formed by two secants or two tangents or a secant and a tangent from a point outside the circle is half the difference of the measures of the intercepted arcs. There are three scenarios involved. Let's take a look at the first scenario. There are two tangents. We have ray LM and ray LN as the tangents of the circle meeting outside at the point L, forming the angle L. Again, we can make use of a single letter to name the angle because there is only one angle involved. Otherwise, you have to use three letters. What are the two in intercepted arcs? We have the arc in blue, which is arc MPN, and obviously it's a major arc. Then we have the arc in red, that is a minor arc, arc MN. So we say the measure of angle L is equal to the difference of the measure of angle MPN and the measure of angle MN divided by 2. We may also have two secants intersecting outside the circle. So this theorem may also be named as the intersecting secants exterior theorem. Where are the two secants? You have ray DE is that secant. We also have ray DF as another secant. Then the point of intersection outside is point D forming angle D. Where are the two arcs? We have intercepted arc EF, which is the blue arc, and we have the red arc, which is arc GH. So again, we say that the measure of angle D is equal to the difference of the measure of arc EF minus the measure of arc GH divided by 2. Or on the figure at the right, we may have one tangent. In here, we have tangent. QR and a secant. In here we have secant QS. The point of intersection is still outside the circle at point Q, forming also the angle Q. Again, we have the two intercepted arcs, the blue and the red. So we can say that the measure of angle Q is equal to the measure of arc RS less the measure of arc RP. The difference we divide it by 2. To prove the theorem, let us make use of the two secants. Now remember whether you make use of two tangents, two secants, or a tangent and a secant, then the proof would still be similar. So the conclusion should be that the measure of angle D, that is the angle outside the two intersecting secants is equal to the difference of the measures of the two intercepted arcs, the blue, which is arc EF, and the red arc, which is arc GH. We take the difference and we divide it by 2. Let us start by joining point E and point H. Why are we allowed to do that? due to the line postulate that says through any two points there is exactly one line and that is the segment that we have drawn having drawn then a segment from e from point e to point h there is now a triangle that is formed there you have triangle d e h and in the figure we can clearly see that since there is a triangle involved there are interior angles and there are exterior angles, prompting us statement number one. The measure of angle D plus the measure of angle DEH is equal to the measure of angle EHF. What would justify that statement? We have the exterior angle theorem pertaining to triangles. The measure of an exterior angle is equal to the sum of the measures of the two remote interior angles of the triangle. 
where is angle D? The one in blue. Where is angle DEH? That is the yellow angle. And the relationship to the exterior angle? There. The sum of the two remote would be equal to the exterior angle. Taking a look at statement number one. We can then simplify statement number one in order to be able to solve for the measure of angle D and subtracting the measure of angle DEH from the left side and the right side, that is minus the measure of angle DEH and then minus the measure of angle DEH, we will then arrive at this statement, the measure of angle D is equal to the measure of angle EHF minus the measure of angle DEH. What allowed us to do that? Again, we have the addition property of equality. Let's take a look at number two. We need the measure of angle EHF and the measure of angle DEH. Where are we going to take that? Let's take a look at the measure of angle EHF. The measure of angle EHF is equal to one half the measure of EF. Where is that angle EHF? We have this angle. And where is the arc? We have the blue arc. Why can we give statement number three? Again, we go back to the inscribed angle theorem that says the measure of the inscribed angle is half the measure of the intercepted arc. Angle EHF is the inscribed angle and EF, the arc opposite that angle, is the intercepted arc. Likewise, applying the same theorem, the inscribed angle theorem, let us take a look at another Inscribe angle. What angle would that be? From number 2, we need DEH. And where is angle DEH? DEH is the one in yellow, the one that is marked. Is equal now to half the measure of the intercepted arc. What is the arc opposite that angle yellow? You have the red arc and that is arc GH. So again, Statement 3 and statement 4 are possible because of the inferior because of the inscribed angle theorem. So if we take a look at statement 2, statement 3, and statement 4. In statement 2, we can now rewrite measure of angle D is equal to instead of writing the measure of angle EHF. We can now substitute that with the one half the measure of arc EF. And instead of writing the measure of angle DEH, we can now substitute that with one half the measure of arc GH. Forming our statement 5, the measure of angle D is equal to one half the measure of arc EF minus one half the measure of arc GH. And by the process of factoring, or that is actually by the law of substitution. And by the process of factorization, we factor out one half in five. We factor out one half. We now arrive at the measure of angle D is equal to one half the difference of the measure of the two intercepted arcs, arc EF and arc GH, which is similar to our previous statement on the left. Thus, we have here proven that it is correct that the measure of the angle outside the circle formed by two secants, two tangents, or a tangent and a secant is equal to half the difference of the measures of the intercepted arcs. Thus, we have proven the theorem.
again. Thank you for listening.